psychology, only online, and today we're going to do the last part of the the last parts of the manuscript, uh, which are the title, the abstract, and the references. And this is not a super difficult part of the manuscript. I mean, the abstract can be a little bit challenging, but the title page is pretty straightforward, and the references can be. Uh, automatically generated for you if you kind of know what you're doing so I'm going to show you how to do that and um, this shouldn't be too painful hopefully not so what we're going to do is we're going to go into content and we're going to find uh, the written assignments here and we want to find the title abstract references where it says web page here click on that link and we're going to open the PDF. And here's your PDF. The title page should contain the title of the paper, the author's name, and the institutional affiliation. You're going to also want to include the running head at the, in the uh, top margin of the title page and the page number in the right-hand margin. Your title should be in both upper and lowercase letters. It should be centered and no more than 12 words in length. Now, I'm not going to give you the exact title for the paper, but you're going to come up with something that captures what we did uh, throughout the semester. There's really no right or wrong titles per se. It's, you know, does, is the title describing the research or it's not? Remember that the title is the first thing someone's going to see when they're looking at research to cite. They're going to see that before they see the abstract. They're going to see the abstract too, but the first thing you're going to see is the title, and you're going to say, does that sound like something I want to read and I could possibly cite for my research? And so if you want your research cited, which you really do because that's uh, very important as a researcher, that other people cite your research, uh, you want to come up with a title that accurately, de accurately depicts whatever study or studies you're conducting. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to open up Microsoft Word here. And so you got your you got your basic page here in the, in the header here. You're going to have running head with lowercase h colon and then we're going to put the short title there first. Okay, so the running head should be the first few words of your full title, which is going to be known as the short title. And then your page number is going to be in the right, in the header, right? Now you're going to have to change the, the pagination uh, because page one is the title page, page two afterwards. You're not going to have the running head on every page. So the words running head only appear on the title page. Whatever comes after running head, which is the short title, will appear on every page. But the words running head only on the title page. So keep that in mind when you're uh, generating the header for your final paper that that the words running head are only on the first page of the title page. So we need to come up with a title. So we don't want them in the header obviously. We want them in the body of text. And we want it centered. So health correlates probably not a great title but something I come up with in two seconds we want that centered we want that 12 point font now this is not a great title, and i kind of done this on purpose. I want you to generate your own title. This is just health correlates of vaccination mask wearing during COVID-19. Does it describe the study? Yeah. Is it the best title? No. Come up with a title that's relevant to what we're talking about, what the research we're doing as a class. So it shouldn't be this title. This is just an example. You can come up with something better than this. It takes a few minutes to think about it come up with something a better descriptor than this this is just an example 
Then we want all the, your full name and the institutional affiliation. Uh, and if you want to put Sydney University of Newark after that, you can. Because if you just leave Borough of Manhattan Community College, a lot of people are not going to know what that is. Right, so if you go to a conference and you say, oh, I'm from Borough of Manhattan Community College, they're just like, what? But if you say you're from City University of New York, they sort of understand, right? So sometimes it's, it's better putting that whole thing together. You do, you do not need to put the date. You don't have to put my name. I should put my, my degree here. Uh, if you have, if you, have uh, you know, honorific, if you have some kind of degree, you could put it there, uh, just so people know who you are. So it looks like that. You see how the title is kind of centered. It's it's a little bit above the midline of the of the title page, and it's completely centered. No dates, no professor so and so, no class name, right? Because research is not really generated within those confines. Now the running head, the words go up here. You need the short title here. The short title is just the first few words. So I'm going to write health correlates in all capitals. So that short title should be in all caps. Health correlates. And then the page number. And that's my title page. Come up with a different title. Make sure your short title is in all caps. It should be the first few words of your full title. Make sure you have the page number in the top right corner. So full title, name, institu institutional affiliation. That's all you need. Okay? Pretty basic. This short title, health correlates, should be on every page in the header. The words running head should only be on the title page. So you have to tinker a little bit around if you're using Microsoft Word or some other word processing software. You got to tinker around a bit to get this so you're not duplicating running head on every page. And there's ways to do that. So your title page is going to be different than the subsequent pages. Make sure page numbers for your entire manuscript or in the upper right header. So that's how we do the title page. Now the abstract. Abstract's a little bit trickier. So remember that the abstract is a concise summary of your research that includes both the hypotheses, you don't have to write out all the hypotheses, but you got to give an idea of what was being tested during the, the research and your conclusions in a very short one or two sentences uh, take away from your conclusion. So the way you can think about writing this abstract is two to three sentences talking about the purpose or the main objective of the research study, one to two sentences on the methodology of the study one or two sentences about the findings and the results of the study. Do not use, I personally don't use for, formal statistics in the abstract. You can see it occasionally depending on where you're looking. Some people may use some statistics, but I always find that it's easier not to. You just want to give the findings or the results of the study in plain English without just the jargon of the statistics, right? Because this abstract is for people to sort of understand what happened with the research. Why did you do the research? How did you do it? What happened? Why is it important? And that gets them to either read the article or not read the article. If you start throwing in stats in there and people don't understand certain stats, they're going to skip it. So I personally don't like stat using stats in the abstract. And then one or two sentences conclusion of the study. And this whole thing, the abstract should be about 150 words at maximum. It depends on the journal. 
most journals, uh, it depends on if it's online, if it's fully online journal, if it's in print, then there's going to be hard caps for how long the abstract should be, how long the entire manuscript should be. So you may be told, I only want the manuscript to be a certain number of words for that journal. And they want the abstract at 120 words, maybe, not 150. And so whatever the journal says, you have to follow. If you just decide to do what you want, they just reject it out, outright. They're not going to even read the article. They're just going to reject it. And it's going to be rejected at like the first level, which is kind of... Um, you know the assistant editor level or you have people just looking at the formatting of your of your manuscript and did you follow the rules that they gave you is it too long all those things that person will probably just outright reject it and it won't even be reviewed so you have to always pay attention to what journal you're publishing to and and what their requirements are if it's online, then obviously you can. There's a little bit more flexibility, but you still have to follow their rules. If you don't follow their rules, it's going to get knocked off probably before the review process. So here's an example from an article: the effect of job stress on clinical health outcomes. Approximately 15 to 25 percent of the U.S. working population is classified as high risk for job stress. The type of stress is known to exert a psychological toll on workers. You see a citation here. That citation is probably from something in the introduction of the manuscript, and that can be useful. So, you know, adding a citation here or there is is perfectly fine. For the abstract, you don't want to like overload the abstract with just citations, in-text citations. But you can add a couple citations uh, just to show that, you know, where you got the information from and that it's kind of backed. It's an important thing to bring up and it's backed up with other research. However, less is done about the impact of job stress on physical health and how current findings translate to clinically relevant outcomes in everyday life, such as susceptibility to the common cold. So these first couple of sentences introduce the problem and describe why the problem is important. And you're going to be doing that with the current manuscript. Why are we studying these health behaviors related to COVID and why is it important to do that? Even if you're bored of it and tired of it and don't care anymore, someone thinks it's important, right? Um, there's a lot of people actually think it's important to study these behaviors because in the future, there's gonna be more problems, right? We're not gonna, it's probably not gonna be a hundred years. And I just watched the, uh, the Senate and the House hearings on the origins of COVID. And I'm not going to go crazy on the origins of COVID. But what I found interesting was that the NIH was just a complete mess at the time. And uh, they actually found old vials filled with smallpox in some storage location in the NIH. Not in a secured area. So just think about that. The NIH was so disorganized and dysregulated that there was just smallpox lying around in some some room, some closet somewhere that no one knew about. You get that smallpox into the wrong hands and now you have uh, bioterrorism. Can it happen? Of course. Will it happen? Hopefully not. But these things are very possible. So, and then smallpox, as I harp back to time and time again, would be a lot more difficult than COVID. COVID is like the best case scenario for a pandemic for the most part. Smallpox is not. So these first three sentences talk about why it's important, you know, what you're studying and why it's important to study it. Now you're gonna add a sentence or two about the methodology. In an ongoing daily, diary study, daily diary study, 68 adults, 37 females, completed measures of job stress and upper respiratory infection every day for eight weeks. That's the methodology. You see there's a sample size. We know that it's predominantly female. It's more females than males. And we know what they did. 
they did some kind of survey, questionnaire measures of job stress and upper respiratory infection symptoms every day for eight weeks. So it's a longitudinal study. Preliminary analysis shows that males who had busier days at work on average also endorsed a greater number of upper respiratory infection symptoms. Additionally, males who reported lower perceived job security and less supervisor support were sick with upper respiratory infections on more days across the study than those with greater job security and supervisor support. So this is kind of saying uh, if stress levels are high, like you have very little job security, right? you're going to get sick more often. If you have more job security, stress levels are lower. So you're not going to be as sick. And this is only in men. Um, among females, endorsing more busy days was associated with greater endorsement of URI symptoms. So that's the, those are the two sentences summarizing the results. And it looks like there's a bigger effect on men than on women. In that men, the job security really seems to play a role in terms of how many days they were sick. The findings expand our understanding of links between job stress and immune functioning by elucidating effects on a clinically relevant health outcome. So that's the conclusion of the study. So yes, job stress plays a role on immune functioning. And it looks like it's even more prevalent in men. So you have your one or two sentence conclusion, and that's your abstract. So all you do is write the word abstract in plain text, center it. So abstract, plain text, centered. And then write the, ab the abstract in a paragraph form like this. You don't need to indent. Just write as a block. It should be double spaced though for the ma uh, manuscript because that allows me to edit it easier. I like everything double spaced as I can put in information. If it's single spaced, it's very hard for me to cram in edits into your papers. So double space it, 12 point font, normal text, uh, abstract, normal text, center it, and then right below that, the paragraph for the abstract. Should be between 120, 150 words. Try not to go over 150 words. I know that I said between, it goes up to 200, but that's generally not gonna be the case. It's generally gonna be capped at like 150 in most cases. It depends on the journal. But this is part of writing concisely. This abstract can be a little bit more difficult to write because you're condensing your whole manuscript into one large paragraph. And it is the first thing that the general audience is going to look at. So when you're doing your lit review, you're going to get the title and you're going to get the abstract. And you're going to read the title. Okay, seems relevant. I'll read the abstract. Or I'll skim the abstract. I may not even read it. I'm just going to skim through it. So you want to make sure that you get your point across and get the take-home points uh, within that abstract. That it's very clear. And you've made your research sound important. You found some hopefully significant effects. We did find one hypothesis. We didn't find the empathy, right? Empathy wasn't playing a role. So that's kind of a, not a great thing, right? We'd, we'd prefer that empathy was having a significant effect on behavior, but it's not in this study. But you have your limitations that you put in your discussion section and you could talk about what could be done. And that last sentence could be, you know, you didn't find the role of empathy, the, the empathy played a role, but uh, future studies should involve a more diverse sample or an older sample or a sample that represents the general population, etc. Whatever the limitations are, you're going to address that and you're going to put that in your last sentence where you're targeting what can be done in the future. So abstract's a little bit trickier to write. That's why it's written last after you've written the whole manuscript. And it takes a little bit of time to construct something that's concise and yet captures all the information you want to capture. Now the references are relatively easy. 
Now, I've given you just general ideas on how to cite journals and books and all that stuff. Uh, these are the rules. You can get this in the APA manual. You can get this online. APA style, 7th edition, APA manual. Uh, you, most people use citation managers, which will generate the, the references automatically. So one popular one is RefWorks. Although I do not think that the BMCC library gives access to that. I don't think we have a subscription to RefWorks. But that's one that's pretty popular. Uh, there's Zo Zotero, which is a free one that's out there. Uh, I use, sometimes I use, you know, I have, I've used RefWorks before. But I, if I don't have a lot of references... I'll just use Google Scholar to generate the citations. So how do you generate citations in Google Scholar? So let's do that. We go to Google Scholar and let's look up the article. You should have the article, right? I'm just gonna look at vaccinations and empathy. So here's an article about herd immunity with empathy. Let's say I use this article. Here's the PDF. Uh, if you go here where it says cite, you see these little quotation marks. This will get you the citation. So you want APA. So it's not formatted correctly, but you're gonna just tweak it a bit. So you're gonna copy it. Let's go into Word here again. Let's, now I don't want running head on any other page than the first page. I, I can fix this. You're gonna make sure that the running head only is on the title page. Just pointing that up. And then you're gonna change the page number, obviously. Let's say you're just doing references. Be help, helpful if I could spell it. You want these references in alphabetical order by author last name. So it should be in alphabetical order by author last name. And it should be double spaced, obviously. Now I copied it, so I'm going to paste it in here. So I've pasted the uh, reference that I got here. What I want to do is make sure that the first line is not indented and the second and subsequent lines are indented. So the first line of the reference is not indented and the second and subsequent lines are. So here I'm just gonna cut this. I'm gonna indent and then I'm gonna paste it. And if I need another one, I'm gonna move it over. I need to space it out like that. Make sure it's double spaced. So it looks like that. First line, not indented. Second and subsequent line, indented. You wanna just make sure that uh, the journal name is in italics, right? This is the volume, 41. This is the issue, and this is the page number. Now, if you have online journals, you're gonna have a URL. You're gonna have basically an identifier. Uh, they call it a DOI, I believe. And you can put that into your citation too. So if you use something called Zotero Bib, um, there's a program called Zotero, which is a reference manager that works kind of similar to RefWorks, and it's free. And that's a good place where you could basically store and organize all your articles in there if you want. But if you just want the bibliography, you can just do Zotero Bib. Right? Make sure you have uh, APA 7th edition here. And then I'm going to put the title of the article here. I'm going to just copy and paste the whole thing and see if it gives it to me. Uh, let's see if it generates it. Yep, this is it. So this actually is probably a little bit more accurate than the Google Scholar one because this actually gives me the the DOI. Which, which they kind of want you to have. It, it really depends on the journal you're submitting to. Like certain journals are gonna be like, 
looking at every single detail. And if you don't have the DOI, they're going to complain, right? Whereas other journals, if you just have a reference that looks like it's an APA style, they're going to be fine with that. So it really depends on the journal. If it's a high tier journal, then you want to have everything as perfectly formatted as possible because uh, they're going to reject a, a lot of art, a lot of submissions. Right. So I've reviewed for fairly high tier journals, and basically the editor sends you a mess or an email, or I get a phone call, usually, you know, usually an email that basically tells you we we plan to reject x number or x percentage of all manuscripts please you know look for all these things so they're basically giving you a long list of things as a reviewer to look for uh and the more you're looking for the more you're gonna have a problem with right and they're saying we don't want to accept more than a certain percentage of our of submissions because they want to be selective is that right i don't know depends on the journal Right, but some of the big journals are going to be super selective. So if you didn't include something like the DOI, you might get penalized for that. So this might be a better way to make sure you have the entire reference. And you're going to have to get rid of the... Uh, I'm going to have to format this to the right font and stuff like that 12 points and you want to double spaced and then you got to get you don't want it you don't want it centered like that right and then you're going to get rid of this background here which is um, I have to go through it get rid of this background here because it's see it's highlighted in blue because I copied and pasted it and then just indent right Probably too many spaces. Yeah, that's better. Whoops. I just double pasted it. Oh well, you know what you're doing. I mean, you're just gonna copy and paste it in here and then format it correctly. I um, I messed up that one. I double pasted it. Uh, so if you want to use Zotero, it's fine. If you want to use Google Scholar, it's fine. Uh, you know, the, these are just two options. This is probably a little bit more accurate. Uh, RefWorks, if you have access to that. But Zotero, regular, the app, like the program Zotero, is pretty decent. I think I've used it before, years ago. And you could just store all your articles there. It just organizes everything for you, and then it generates all the citations. So if you're writing a, a long manuscript, and you're, you're having, like, say... 100 citations that means you have to have 100 reference entries right so that's going to be hard to like copy and paste 100 times instead if you have this like reference organizer or citation organizer it'll generate it automatically for you it saves a lot of time so refworks is like super popular but if you don't I don't think BMCC has it because I haven't used it at BMCC um, but for this kind of exercise, either Zotero, Bib, or even the um, citation from here, although it may not 100, be 100% accurate, it's, it's good enough for this sort of thing. Uh, it's easier than just writing it out, writing the reference out, like typing it up basically individually, although you can do that too. So the way I use, the website I use for all sort of things formatting is the Purdue Writing Lab. So if you go to Purdue Writing Lab, I think it's very useful. And you have APA Guide. And it gives you all the in-text citations. And it'll give you a reference list, basic rules, 7th edition, right? So it tells you how to do, what to put in parentheses, what to put in italics and how to format things. And there's even a citation. Oh, this is a citation machine. Okay, so you can use citation machine too. See, all these things start popping up that are basically free citations. 
what I put here, this one here. Let's see what citation machine gives me. This is a journal right here. So here's the journal and Complete citation. There's your citation here. So if you want, you can just copy the citation here. So citation machine is another one you got here to use. All these different things you can use. Citation machine. And those are your references. You put them in alphabetical order by author last name and you double space them and you're good to go. So, title page, abstract, references. You should have a minimum of five references. Uh, so, you should have at least five of these. Put them in alphabetical order, double space, and that should be it. So hopefully that helps, and if you have any other questions, you can always email me, or we can always set up uh, Zoom office hours. I have office hours on Friday afternoons, so we can do that too. Just send me an email. Happy to happy to do Zoom too. Okay. Uh, hopefully that helps you. If not, email Zoom, whatever you want to do. Let me know, and uh, we'll try to get it situated and fixed. Okay. Bye for now. I look forward to reading your rough drafts and your final paper. Take care.